Well, we are back from the winter break and about to get stuck back into the Bundesliga, currently just sticking outside of a European spot in the past couple of seasons. This has been a time of the year that's really made or broken our seasons. And first up, it's not easy. We go to the yellow wall and take on Borussia Dortmund. to episode 66 of the Leipzig Loco with Locomotive Leipzig here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up today we take on Dortmund in our first game back in the Bundesliga from the winter. Breaking off the back of that, we take on Borussia Mönchengladbach, those guys down just outside of a relegation playoff spot. We take them on in the third round of the DFB Pockles. So if you're looking forward to those two games coming up in today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up. On the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but at the end of last week, we played a couple of our last four games before we did head in to that winter break and picked up some quite good results as well against Eintracht Frankfurt and especially Hoffenheim. If you missed the episode, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner. Off the back of that, we took on some teams that based on form we really should have been picking up some good points against. Unfortunately, we did drop points at home against Fortuna Dusseldorf. This was a game that it felt like we were well and truly on the front foot, but unfortunately, the Cuda got a goal for Fortuna Dusseldorf just before we got one through Amadori. Nothing much happened in the second half, albeit as you can tell there by the XG match story, we certainly were the better team in that game, and the stats suggested as well, especially that XG, but unfortunately, despite having eight more shots, the same amount on target, and we only got out of that one with a one all draw, but thankfully, it was not a loss, and off the back of that, we took on Cologne this game, also quite a tight one, and we picked up a 3-2 win here, away from home this game, but opposite of the previous one, this was a game where we didn't have many chances, but were very efficient with them, Amadori and Bushawari grabbing goals, just after the 20 minute mark, right off the back of that, Pierce Dunn did grab one back for Cologne, and then about 15 minutes after half time, Osorio made it to all. But thankfully, Benedetti came off the bench and scored a ripper with only a few minutes left in that one to give us all three points in our last game before the winter break. And going into that game, as you might be able to tell, no Daniel Cueto in that game. It was Ulla Imhand who did start. That is one of our injuries that we do have coming back from the winter break, unfortunately. In between that Dusseldorf and Cologne game, Daniel Cueto did pick up an injury and he is still out. If we go over and have a look at our squad at the moment, you can see it. He has picked up an injury. He is still going to be out for 11 days to three weeks with some sprained knee ligaments. So unfortunately, that makes our task in today's episode just a little bit tougher. And a couple of friendlies that we have played coming back. From the winter break, we've just played two of them and picked up, I believe it was 4-2 wins in both of those. In fact, one of them was by four goals to one. But unfortunately, another injury to another starter, this time Benjamin Bushuari, who to be fair, has been very good out on that left wing. He's got sprained ankle ligaments and is out for eight days to three weeks. And neither of those players will feature in either game in today's episode. So it is going to make us a little bit weaker, but hopefully we can still pick up some decent results in today's episode, especially because we come back from the winter break still in a pretty good position on the Bundesliga table. We are joint on points with Hoffenheim, albeit those guys do have a game in hand somehow, and they are currently inside of a European spot, so we are certainly right in the fight going in to the second half of the season, albeit first up, we do take on some tough opposition, albeit opposition that we did beat in our first game of the season early on last week. In Borussia Dortmund, they come into this one having lost to RB Leipzig before the winter break. RB Leipzig, a team who have risen right at the table off the back of some good form in that second part of the first half of the season. But at home, obviously, this is a team who will definitely be the favourites, especially because those injuries they had going into that first game of the season are no longer there. Of course, they've got the likes of Yusufa Makoko back, no doubt. He will start up front. They've got a couple of injuries, but to players, not nearly as important as those ones who were out in that first clash where we did take them on. They were missing two strikers for that one. It did feel like it did impact them. Unfortunately, I think their strikers in this one are going to be a lot better. And hopefully, despite those injuries to Cueto and Bushuari, we can pick up a decent result in the first game 
of today's episode. But before we do get into that, just a quick update on the transfer window. Of course, we are in January. We have put a bid in for a player who will hopefully join us come the start of the new season. That is Jordan Xerxes from Bayer Leverkusen. Very decent central attacking midfielder. If he wasn't currently injured, would be very tempted to bring him to the club right now. But obviously, with him being injured, not much point. He's certainly a bit better than Salah Ula Imham, but he will be hopefully be joining us come the start of next season. We have put in a bid for him to join us, and his contract does expire come the end of the season, but he is certainly a good promising player, gives us some better depth in that central attacking midfield area, and also we've put a bid in as well for a young goalkeeper out of Chorley, James Gerrard, 17 years old, so not actually sure when this guy would arrive, but very good potential, and if he gets here early enough, should hopefully be homegrown at club and nation after a couple of years as well. So that is another transfer we are going to try and get over the line during the course of today's episode, albeit future transfers that probably won't impact us throughout the rest of the season. We could bring Zuxi in, but we'll see. It depends on that injury. And if we are still in a European fight, if we're not, might just be worth holding out until the start of next season to wait and bring them in. Also, we have got a little boost to our wage budget because we did adjust our season expectations at the halfway point of the season these days. We are expected to be, it doesn't actually pop up here, but the expectation is for us to avoid a relegation battle with our situation on the points table. I do feel like that is something we should definitely be capable of these days. We are 18 points clear of mines and hopefully that gap does extend throughout the rest of the season. As I said, we can keep ourselves and a little bit of a push for European football. We get stuck into the first game of today's episode. We're taking on Bolivia Dortmund. Hopefully we can pick up a similar result to that one we did earlier this season, albeit as I said, it does look like they've got Yusuf and Makoko up front, which certainly is going to make our task a lot tougher, as you can see, already being told to tightly mark a lot of that front line. In terms of us, obviously, a Tilgan left wing, Salah Ula Imhand is in that cam role, but apart from that, we're at full strength coming back. From the winter break, we'll just go forward and make sure that is the case. I didn't make any other changes coming into this one. It is a free game week coming up as well, so there could be some tired players. But we go into this one, apart from those two, at full strength. Hopefully, we can put at a decent performance, at least obviously not a game that we're expected to win. But hopefully, we can put up a fight and maybe escape from this one with a point that would be a pretty good result. We'll get through the pre-match interview here and see what that Dortmund team sheet does look like in front of their home fans. Indeed, it is Makoko up front, a very strong attacking lineup there. Brandt and Reiner in the attacking midfield, and Bellingham just a bit further back. As I said before, we've got a Tilgen and Imhand in there for the injuries to Bushuari as well as Quetto. But hopefully, we can still pick up a decent result without those players, even though we're probably... Not expected to do much here against a team like Borussia Dortmund, but as I said earlier, this is a game we did win earlier this season, but very early on here, it is Borussia Dortmund who are on the ball. Silver plays that went up to Zaire Emery, now Bellingham gets it up to Reiner, and now Mumi makes his way down that right-hand side. Guedes, he starts on the right-hand side with another player who was missing for that first one this season. Jude Bellingham with an early chance, thankfully, from a very tight angle and didn't actually Trouble our goalkeeper, it goes out for a goal kick. We don't mind shots like that. And now down the other end here, it is a free kick in our favour. Amadori with a chance, but unfortunately, Kobel makes a save there at his near post. That was a decent chance, actually. Of course, Amadori has been very good for us in the air this season up front. Definitely a point of difference from our last couple of seasons here at Lokomotiv Leipzig. And we get the ball back from that clearance, albeit Comedio plays that one back to Ibisic out now to Tom Gale, starts to creep his way forward, does our ball playing defender, but that is a really poor pass, Makoko tried to link up there with Julian and Brandt, but thankfully we intercept it, and Atilgen now gets in behind, he's from a fair way out, and unfortunately that shot takes a big deflection, and Kobel will make a save, still nil all coming up to the 10 minute mark, but only shortly off the back of that, it is another highlight for only Dortmund, Imhand was on the attack, but unfortunately, did lose out on position yet again. They find good space down their right-hand side. Guedes will slot through Yusuf Makoko in front of goal. He is lethal. We know that from our Blue Hell save a couple of FMs ago with Sporting Kansas City. Still not too sure how we got him to that club, but he was onside, and we go 1-0 down after only six minutes. Unfortunately, Imhan lost the ball. 
Moomin plays this one for Baguetas, another player who missed that first game of the season. And Makoko gets in behind our defence, slots that one away nicely, and we go 1-0 down very early. And hopefully, that's not a sign of things to come. Hopefully, we can at least pick a goal back in this game, but not a good start in this one. It's fair to say. 1-0 down, coming up to the 10-minute mark. Off the back of that, things just slowed down a little bit. 15 minutes in now, still 1-0, which is not too bad. Hopefully, we can get on the front foot a little bit more. I see there that Moomin, their right back, might have picked up a potential injury. That might make them a little bit weak in that area, which could potentially play to our advantage. Of course, one of those players who was injured that we saw in the build-up was a right back. But at the 30-minute mark, another highlight in this game, it is a throw to Dortmund. Gio Reyna plays that one back to Bellingham, and now Guedes, I believe that was Bellingham, in fact it might not have been, but now Mane on the ball, in fact it was Jude, he plays that one back out to Mimic, now down that right hand side, they go back to Kobol, but decent press from us there, albeit they now find lots of space, down their left hand side, Silva starts to make his way into our half, through Julian Brandt, and a nice ball over the top there, yet again for Yusuf and Makoko Ibizic, with a really weird save attempt there, he did the splits two times, and I'm not really too sure why, and he was nowhere near the ball. Yusuf Makoko kind of chips our goalkeeper. And we are 2-0 down. And this is not the return we wanted from the winter break. Makoko just tearing us apart at the moment. No idea what Ivizic is trying to do there. And we go 2-0 down just past the half hour mark. And this could be a long day at the office if this continues our defenders and goalkeeper all on pretty poor ratings. Thankfully, we're starting to make our way towards half time now. Still only down by two goals to nil. Hopefully we can get into the sheds with that scoreline, albeit it is a throw in there in our favour, but Borussia Dortmund do win it back. That's very soft, and Guedes is on the ball. Good work there from Dorenzo, plays it back to Escobar. Bullock finds Krasnicki and a lot of space. Hopefully now we can do something and maybe peg a goal back before half time. but unfortunately that ball a little bit too deep, but Campanelli is back on it, plays that one over to Bullock. Back there to Camillo, but the pass is undercooked and Gio Reyna can get that one for Borussia Dortmund. Julian Brandt yet again ball over the top for Makoko looking for a hat trick. He puts it away and he is tearing us apart. Time for us now to berate these guys. That is a real game killer just before halftime and Dortmund might be paying us back for that win we got on the opening day of the season. Just a bit loose on the ball there yet again and use for Makoko is just lethal in front of goal. As we all know, one of the most lethal strikers in football manager after a couple of years of development. 3-0. And just before half time, there's another chance here for Borussia Dortmund from a free kick. Julian Brandt. That one is blocked, but Dortmund are still on the attack. They play that one out to Mane down the right hand side. Just holds things up here inside the box. Back for Bellingham. Floats that one out to Julian Brandt down that left hand side. It somehow falls to Reyna. Gets through Ivizic. And Makoko grabs four inside the first half. Think it might be a good idea to press him there. Good idea there, assistant manager. If only you told us that in about the first 10 minutes. And Yusuf and Makoko tearing us apart, albeit this time that goal did have a fair share of luck in it. We had a couple of good chances there to deal with that danger. Somehow that Rainer shot gets through Ivizic and Makoko reacts first and grabs four first half goals. And it might not be over yet. Another highlight here from the restart. Lots of action inside these last couple of minutes of this first half. But now, 4-0 down. This is pretty much game over. And a very poor performance. First one back from the winter break competitively. And this might put a decent dent in our chances of European football. Unless we can get back on the horse nicely in our Bundesliga games. Off the back of this, of course, the second one today is in the DFB Pockel. So not too relevant. To the league table, we are on the attack here, really for the first time in this game. Salah Ula Imhand with a chance, but unfortunately, that shot goes well wide. And that was a pathetic first half. They have had five shots on target and are 4-0 in front. To be fair, we had some decent chances there through Amadori early and Imhand late, but didn't take them. And really, this is game over. Even at halftime, Ivizic on a shocking rating. Can't take him off, but we can take off Tom Gale on a 6-4 Mon Louis. Also, Campanelli on a 6.2 for Florian Huxa. And also, I think we might take off Racine Bullock here for Miguel Chaiwa in defense on a 6.3. We'll try and strengthen that up for the second half. But that first half, absolutely pathetic 
it is fair to say we'll just adjust some of these opposition instructions and hopefully try and sort out a way to shut down Yusuf and Makoko in the second half. As you can see, we've been trying stuff, just hasn't been working. So that is a bit of a concern. Obviously, triggering a press might not have worked, but we might just try it anyway in the early stages of the second half. But yeah, we're going to have to tell the guys that that was a terrible first half. Hopefully, we improve in the second. Early highlight Dortmund on the front foot, but thankfully, we are in position. Dorenzo gets that one forward to a Tilgan. Imhan can't quite link up, but the ball thankfully falls back to Escobar. But poor pass. And Julian Brandt plays that one forward to Makoko. This time, he'll set up Gio Reyna. And he gets on the score sheet. And the halftime team talk didn't work. We are 5 0 down after 46 minutes. And I want to dig a hole and escape here out of the Signal Aduna Park. Julian Brandt plays it to Makoko. First time pass. Just cuts for our centre backs. Mongawi, not a great start for him either. Ivizic gets chipped yet again. And we are 5 0 down very early in the second half. And at this point, it might actually be a good idea to maybe think of our next couple of substitutions to try and save some players up for that third round of the DFB Pockle. Because obviously, we're not winning this game these days. Ivizic on a 5.5. I think that's the lowest ranking I've ever seen one of my players have in Football Manager. But we might take off some players here we might actually need for the DFB Pockle that game coming up only a couple of days off the back of this one. So Sebastian Escobar can be quite injury prone. We'll bring on Benedetti in his place. And also, we might give a rest here to Salah Ula Imhand with our camp position being quite weak at the moment. With no Daniel Cueto, Jill Jarolam, who's come up from the second team, can play for the rest of this game in that position. And hopefully... We can just make sure that we're not going to be too tired going into that DFB Pockel game because really, that's all we've got to play for now in today's episode, being absolutely thumped here by Borussia Dortmund. And yet again, they are on the attack with 25 minutes left. Gio Reyna looks for a double, but thankfully that shot goes over the top right corner and it is still 5-0, but we're getting absolutely thumped. All the stats in Dortmund's favour have actually had some chances, seven shots Four on target, but only really seen two of those, and they weren't great chances. We try and play a ball out there for a Tilgan with 15 minutes left, unfortunately, doesn't really help us. And Dortmund might be looking for six. This could get to Liverpool versus Man United levels the way that this game's going. Still plenty of time left, especially if they slot through Guedes, but thankfully, he's not quite as clinical in front of goal as Makoko just puts it wide. It is still 5 0, and that feels a little bit generous that of Borussia Dortmund so far in this game. We've just been completely blasted away by the yellow and black here. And thankfully, we're nearly getting into injury time in this game. The second half hasn't been too painful. Off the back of that early goal we conceded, the referee, thankfully, only plays one minute of at a time. And that was pretty pathetic first up from the winter break. Obviously not helped by those injuries to Cueto and Bushuari but still conceding five goals with pretty much a first choice defense and defensive midfield is not good. Use for Makoko just tore us apart four goals in the first half and assist early in the second. And that means we've now got some catch up to play if we want to get back into that European race proper. We now slip below the likes of RB Leipzig for the first time this season. That's disappointing. And also Eintracht Frankfurt have jumped above us, but that means we go down to ninth on the table and it really impacts our goal differential as well. But unfortunately, not a good result in that first game of today's episode. We were thumped by Yusuf and Makoko, 5-0 loss to Borussia Dortmund. And just stopping in prior to the second game of today's episode against Borussia Mönchengladbach in the cup. Hopefully that one goes a lot better than that first game today. But just some confirmation of those free transfers they have gone through. So Jordan Jerksy will join us come the start of next season is still out injured, so I don't know if we are going to get him in a little bit earlier. Also, we can't actually afford the transfer fee at the moment to do that, so if that was an option we wanted to do, we'd probably have to look at offloading Salah Ula in hand, and considering Xerxes injured, that's probably not a great idea at the moment, but Xerxes will be joining us from Bayer Leverkusen for our second season, hopefully, in the Bundesliga, albeit off the back of that Dortmund result, maybe. That's not quite as much of a given as I was thinking, but also the young goalkeeper will join us as well as a future prospect. Will James Gerrard, that might be a player 
to keep an eye out on by the time we do start to make an impact in Europe in the save you'd hope so anyway at 17 years old with a lot of potential is the trim begonia but those are a couple of free transfers that have gone through and they'll join us going for the start of next season and in the case of Gerard a little bit later thing as he is only 17 years old and a couple of days off the back of confirming those free transfers going through at the start of next season as well as a little bit later we are about to play our second game of today's episode our second one back from the winter break hopefully this one goes a lot better than that first one against Borussia Dortmund you'd hope so we take on Borussia Mönchengladbach these guys are really struggling all the way down in 13th first game back from the winter break they also suffered a heavy defeat 4-1 to Schalke and to be fair Schalke, uh, no Borussia Dortmund even before the winter break, some losses there to Eintracht Frankfurt Mines and Bayer Leverkusen Mines of course are down in that relegation zone so they are really struggling at the moment, are Borussia Mönchengladbach in this game is at home for us so hopefully we can pick up a decent result in terms of our team sheet going in to this game, we are having to rotate a little bit with some players tired from that previous game unfortunately we did give a rest to Sebastian Escobar with a half hour left, but unfortunately he is quite injury prone as you can see. So that means that Benedetti will come in also coming in Yuri Bass at left back because Dorenzo is another player who is very injury prone. And also we've got Gilles Jorilam starting in the attacking midfield, Salah Ula in hand, another player injury prone. And the same applies for Osner Tilgan to so Tyler Dibling will give a start to on the left hand side, usually play him out right, but just feel like he's a better option than Baker Boaty, especially on attack on that left hand side as an inside board with that finishing. So quite a few changes going in to the second game of today's episode, but hopefully we put out a better performance. I did have a word with some of the players off the back of that previous game, especially Nikola Ivisic also praised their conduct. So hopefully they're in a good mood going in. To this one, as you can see, Bayer Leverkusen should be making their way through in Jan Regensburg currently with a lead over Hanover. So a couple of two Bundesliga teams there are involved in this third round of the DFB Pokal. But hopefully we can pick up a result here against a team struggling a lot more than Borussia Dortmund in the Bundesliga. And we get stuck into the second game of today's episode. But surely it can't go as bad as that Dortmund game did. That was absolutely atrocious. And of course, Yusuf and Makoko. I don't think Borussia Mönchengladbach have any players of that quality. And hopefully, despite the fact we are rotating quite a bit for this one, we can go a lot better. Obviously, I'm going to tell the guys, expect to see a much better performance from you tonight against the team who are struggling quite a lot more. In the league, what do we need to improve off the back of a disappointing effort last time? Everything. And you've made wholesale changes, really. That is because of rotation and making sure some of our other players get some game time, but mainly to try and avoid any more injuries. There's our team, as we ran through before, quite a few changes with those tire bodies off the back of that Dortmund embarrassment. And there I glad back, going with a 4-4-2. It's not a team that I'm overly familiar with, actually. Not a lot of noble names in that one. And they come into this one, as you saw before, in some pretty ratchet form. So hopefully we can make the most of that and get back on track here, even if it is just in the cup, make the most of our win in the second round against RB Leipzig before that win to break. But the first highlight here at the 10 minute mark is in favor of Borussia Mönchengladbach, albeit they are having to play out here from the back. Matulo plays that one to Julian Weigel. That's one player who we are somewhat familiar with, having been a former Dortmund man. Thankfully, Tom Gale cuts that ball off in dibbling early, gets on the attack, but unfortunately tries to play a ball forward there to Amadori. Can't quite link up, and now they're down the other end. Jutta with a chance to get Munchen Glad back here on the attack, and Bullet with a chance, but good tackle there from Krasnicki. Falls back out to Bullet, but thankfully that shot goes just over the bar. And after the first highlight, it is still nil all. And honestly, not a great start to this game as Gladbach have had three shots. We have just had the one, so hopefully that changes during the remainder of the first half as we start to get a little bit more going in this game but coming up to the half hour mark still locked up at nil all and now things start to even up in terms of starts Amadori plays that one for two crowds Nicky that's a terrible tackle that from Regiri and we might be getting a red card to the opposition for the second cup game in a row indeed that is the case and surely now it's a chance for us to pick up a win off the back of that Dortmund lost a couple of hitters there from the subsequent free kick but unfortunately Bullock puts that one just wide but just like against RB Leipzig, our opposition get a red card at a very similar time as well. And these guys 
are struggling in a similar way to what Leipzig were going into that cup game. So really a good chance for us here to get back on the front foot in our second game back from the winter break and hopefully make the cause of the cup for the second season. In a row, Yuri Bastia takes on a shot from a tight angle, probably could look to square that for someone like Amadori, but we're going to go into half time here, locked up at no all, everyone playing quite decently, but obviously with about 12 minutes left in that first half, that red card could give us a big edge going in to the second half, especially once some Gladbach players do get a little bit more tired. No doubt that will be the case once they do get deeper into this game, having to cover for us having that extra man, but we'll tell the guys we weren't that bad. You can kick on especially playing against only 10 men in the second half. And we'll get the second half underway with no changes as of yet. We might make a few later on if Gladbach do start to get on the front foot. And some early worrying signs here as the first highlight potentially is in favour of the away team. Hernandez finds a little bit of space down our right hand side. Now Cancelleri inside the box. Gal gets a foot in there and Ivizic actually makes a save. We didn't see too much of that in that prior game. Obviously 5.5 rating. Still a standard, it was that bad. But coming up to the 50 minute mark, Jules Jarolim has picked up a yellow card and only on a 6.4. Now we could bring on Salah Ula Imhand, but I actually feel like we'll bring on Osman Atilgan and we might move Tyler Dibbling into their attacking midfield role. I do like his versatility, and especially with that finishing, playing almost as a second striker, could work for us during the rest of the second half and shortly off the back of that first substitution. It was the glove back with a throw, but thankfully Krasnicki wins that one for us, but unfortunately, bit of a loose pass. And it is again glove back here on the ball, but again, Krasnicki gets in the way, but unfortunately just pumps that one deep and glove back will get a chance to play out from the back. Now it's Wuba who is on a yellow card. So a few players here with discipline issues for glove back. Maybe we can make the most of that, but this is a bit concerning in the second half. Really, it has been glove back who have been on the front foot, might have regrouped a little bit and made some changes going into the second half off the back of that red card. Good tackle, that one from Benedetti. And now it is Campanelli who starts to make his way forward. Nice pass there for Tyler Dibbling. Squares that one for Amadori. As soon as we move him into the attacking midfield, he picks up an assist and Amadori gets on the score sheet. We finally score in today's episode and finally pick up a goal against the 10 men of Borussia Mönchengladbach and hopefully now we can kick on and pick up a win to see us go through to the quarterfinals of the DFB Poffel yet again but it was a bit of a scrappy highlight but eventually we take a 1-0 lead with 35 minutes left in this game and as I said before hopefully now we can kick on a little bit and shortly off the back of that goal we have a throw in here inside of the final third Osman Tilgan on the ball goes down but unfortunately that tackle was legal according to the referees Hernandez now finds Camillo in a lot of space and Jata on the attack but good work there from Yuri Bas actually starting to improve quite a bit and we have used him over Dorenzo this season now Campanelli plays that one for two crowds Nicky who did help set up that prior goal just tries to do his man there down our right hand side and eventually we get this ball onto the edge of the box Benedetti with a shot from a very similar position to where he scored our winner against Cologne prior to the winter break unfortunately this time the goalkeeper makes a save and that one doesn't quite find Tom Gale from the corner still 1-0 with a half hour left and just checking on some player fitness now it is Krasnicki who is down to a red heart so this time we'll bring on Imhand and Tyler Dibbling can now go out right and also while we're here Billy Comedio is only on a 6.5 so we'll bring on Zayn Monlui in his place and this time play him as a central defender. And hopefully that will help us see out this lead for the remainder of the half hour of this game. Off the back of that, there is a highlight. I dare say this one won't amount to much. And indeed, that is the case. But now, inside the last half hour, we are certainly on the front foot off the back of that red card to Borussia Mönchengladbach and still one nil up with 20 minutes left, albeit now Tom Gall has picked up a yellow card and Racine Bullock a red heart. So we'll make our last couple of subs now. Chaiwa can come on. For Bullock, and in terms of defence, I would like to take Tom Gale off with that yellow card, make sure we can hold on to that advantage. So with that in mind, we might have to make a change here to our back four and try and play someone a little bit out of position, potentially, like Yuri Bass. He does look tall enough, potentially, to handle centre-back. So I think we'll bring on Dorenzo for Tom Gale, and Yuri Bass can play centre-back 
for these last 20 minutes and hopefully that will do the job for us in terms of our substitutions albeit right off the back of making those there is a highlight here it does start with Borussia Mönchengladbach playing out from the back hopefully no defensive errors off the back of just shuffling things up a little bit to make sure that hopefully we don't also go down to 10 men good work there from Chaiwa to win that ball back for us also helped out there from Campanelli and Benedetti plays that one out to a Tilga nice ball there for Ola Imhart, he picks a pass that does find Nicolo Amadori, buries that one for his 12th goal of the season, and surely that will be the goal to make sure we go through to the quarterfinals of the DFB Pockle yet again. We have been helped out by that red car, but we'll take it two games in a row, but in the cup, you've got to take your chances, and to be fair, we're actually building up a decent cup record here at Lokomotiv Leipzig, bit of a fortunate pass that one from Imhart did look like it got cut out a little bit, but thankfully, a bit of a deflection, it did fall to Amadori, he was clearly onside, and we take a 2-0 lead, albeit shortly off the back of that, it is a corner to Gladbach, and thankfully, I think it was Tillman, just puts that one wide, and we are still up by two goals, and we're about to make our way inside the last 10 minutes of this game, I don't think we'll need to time waste too much, we're going to wait until these last five minutes, and now start to do just a little bit, but hopefully, Nothing more needed, seeing as we are only playing against 10 men, but we make our way into the last stages of this game. Took us a little while to get on the front foot, off the back of that red car, but we did so in the second half. Two goals to Amadori, one step by Dibbling, the other from Ula Imhand, and we should be making our way through to the quarterfinals yet again. Gladbach do win that ball there, but good tracking back there from Campanelli with two minutes left. We are on the ball yet again. Dibbling, though, Bit loose on the ball, and Bobba on that yellow card gets it back, but good work that time from Mon Louis. But it's a bit helter skelter, the ball being turned over quite a bit. But hopefully, chance for us to deal with that danger, albeit Gladbach do win the race to that ball. Yuri Bass heads it away. Gladbach, though, still in position on the edge of the box. Jata plays that one out to Decker. Will he try and square this for a teammate? He does, but big save from Ivizic yet again. Bentley coming up for those in this game, I suppose. Not in the Dortmund game, we really, we got absolutely battered, and thankfully, we did make the most of that red card, and pick up a 2-0 win in the third round of the DFB Pockle, so it does mean for the second season in a row, we are making our way through to the quarterfinals, have been helped out quite a bit, as I said earlier, by red cards this season, but at least we're making the most of it, that one a bit more comprehensive than our win over RB Leipzig, we had to leave that one late, and it did end up to this one a bit more comprehensive especially against a team who are struggling for form and that red card obviously didn't help but thankfully Nicolo Amadori picks up a second half double and we bounce back from that 5-0 loss to Dortmund with a 2-0 win over Gladbach in the third round of the cup. So thankfully we did bounce back from that loss to Dortmund especially against 10 men there of Borussia Mönchengladbach that red card did look pretty clear could have seen worse tackles than that but obviously Krasnicki would have been through on goal without that, and thankfully, we do go through to the quarterfinals of the DFB Pokal. Interesting to see the Armini of Bielefeld have beaten Stuttgart, so there are going to be a couple of two Bundesliga teams in the draw for that fourth round, but the teams going through us buying Wolfsburg, Fortuna Düsseldorf, Eintracht Frankfurt, Armini of Bielefeld, Jan Regensburg, and Bayer Leverkusen, if we can avoid Bayern Munich, and potentially Wolfsburg, because that team were on top of the table coming back from the winter break, I'm not too sure if that is still the case, and it is not, because unfortunately, they did lose to Bayern Munich in the first game back, but hopefully we might get drawn against one of those two Bundesliga teams going in to the quarterfinals of that competition, unfortunately can't bring you guys that draw just yet, that doesn't take place until all the way at the end of January, we might have to come back and update you guys on who we have in the quarters in tomorrow's episode, but hopefully we might get a cup run to keep an eye on late this season, as well as our finishing position in the Bundesliga, which hopefully we can start to find some form and again off the back of that win in the cup and not continue our form from that 5-0 loss to Dortmund in that first game of today's episode, but I think that will do it for today, unfortunately got bashed there by Yusuf and Makoko and Borussia Dortmund first up, but thankfully made the most of that red card and are through to the quarterfinals of the DFB Pockle, if you did enjoy today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. I think tomorrow we'll come back off the back 
of transfer deadline day in January. We'll update you guys if we make any moves and also on those results from the games against Stuttgart. Of course, we lost to them in our second game of the season. Hopefully at home, we can bounce back. We also take on Freiburg away as well as her for Berlin. But we'll come back in early February, do a transfer update if we need to, if we make any more moves that impact our squad going into the remainder of the season or going in to the start of the next one with some more free transfers. But we'll come back and I think we'll take on Wolfsburg. Those guys certainly are still in a fight for the title with Bayern, even though they did lose to them first game back from the winter break. And also, even though we've just played them, we'll take on Borussia Mönchengladbach again, see what they're about when they might have 11 players on the field. But that does look like a much more winnable game for us in the Bundesliga and hopefully we might make our way back into a European fight by that stage in tomorrow's episode and also update you guys on who we're going to be playing in that quarterfinal of the DFB Pockle but we'll come back tomorrow and take on Wolfsburg and yet again Borussia Mönchengladbach this time both in the Bundesliga so until then thank you very much for watching keep on keeping on and I'll see you then cheers don't know how I ended up, I ended up to last, oh, oh, oh. Sink through the deep and hurt and defeat.